This is episode 4 from season 2 of Tripacast, your one-stop shop on all things education and the arts. I am Jeremy Solomon and with me today is Felsita Shruti. Felsi is an early childhood practitioner who is the owner and center head of The Inn Child Care and After School Care. She has a plethora of certificates under her belt for child psychology, educational psychology, special education, learning disability, phonics and the like. In her free time, she enjoys art and participates in a number of hands-on projects and lets her creativity seep into her work and everyday life. Join us as we discuss among other things, early years education, starting a child care, inspiration, and creativity. Hey Felsi, what's up how's life? Hey bro, hi. Uh, thank you so much for having me on board. Uh it's a pleasure to share the platform with you. Life is going great. Thank you. That's great How are you? to hear and I'm doing well as well and it's also a pleasure to have you on board today. More so because you are the first person that I'm doing the podcast with live. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Until now, everyone we've been doing this with has been on Zoom, and we've been editing it afterwards. But this mm. is the first live podcast, and hopefully, from here on out, we will be able to do a lot more live mm. podcasts because the human connection is much, much, much better and stronger than doing things on Zoom, true, right? True. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, if our viewers have seen the other podcast, and if you've mm-hmm. seen it too, we generally start with a little game. Mm-hmm. and i was wondering whether we i should do a new game but then i thought let's do a game that i've already done on a previous podcast all right and uh, see how this game works in a live setup like this mm-hmm. right so basically it is uh, a story builder game all right yeah which is which is we play in all the schools or the classrooms mm-hmm. whatever right so it's very simple you say one sentence and i say the next sentence you say and mm-hmm. we continue one after the other mm-hmm. right and how this works is uh, one person starts and the next person continues however the twist here is yes there is a twist <laughs> the twist here is that um if i start my sentence with a letter a mm-hmm. your next ten- sentence needs to start with the letter b All then right. i start with c and you start with d mm-hmm. so we go with the alphabet okay and uh, there is another twist to this that i'm going to throw on right now and that is we're not just telling the story hmm. we are going to be characters in that story wow <laughs> so we are we're, we're having dialogues over here, okay so hmm. what i'm going to ask you is to give me any random occupation okay teacher random <laughs> we are both in the teaching industry so let's do something a little different all right uh, doctor doctor okay give me a location that a doctor is generally not there not there uh, a supermarket a supermarket and uh, why is the doctor the supermarket because maybe uh, all the others do the shopping for him okay all the others <laughs> he's always 24 by 7 at the hospital <laughs> okay so what 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 is the doctor buying What's the What is the doctor buying? He where he's not there, right? Yeah, but in, at the supermarket what is he buying? But he's not there at the supermarket. In this situation he's, he's there. there. <laughs> so at the supermarket what is he buying? Hand gloves. Hand gloves. Okay, cool. <laughs> Here's the thing. Both of us are doctors. Both of us are in the supermarket mm. and there is only one pair of hand gloves left. Oh, that's nice. the situation. <laughs> so we have a dialogue, have a conversation with each other, wanting the last pair of hand gloves, but uh-huh. each sentence needs to be one after the other in the order of the alphabet. All right. Okay. Would you like to start? <laughs> yes. Okay. So your sentence will start with the letter A, and we'll go on. And you're a doctor in the hospital. All right. In the. Oh, uh, sorry. Supermarket. Supermarket. <laughs> okay. Uh, the airplane is going up in the sky. better i wait here only and wait for the hand gloves to come uh catch the thief <laughs> catch the thief don't you know that the stock still has to come in nobody stole the hand gloves oh the eggs are still there in the refrigerator <laughs> 
forget it maybe i'll do the surgery without any hand gloves <laughs> here okay the gloves are here <laughs> hurrah i finally got the hand gloves <laughs> and i seems to joking are you joking shouldn't we wait for the hand gloves to come time to go home <laughs> home JK, time JK, JK, after jk okay Oh, okay, I'm stuck. <laughs> okay. Okay, maybe that's the word K. 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 I am stuck. Kick start. <laughs> oh, kick start. Okay. Um, laugh, laugh as much as you can. How are we gonna get these hand gloves? You, you, why do you keep laughing like this? Monkeying around. <laughs> Nothing matters right now. <laughs> Oh, I'm stuck. Yeah, it's... Oh! <laughs> Please, concentrate on what we're doing now. There are patients waiting for us. Quiet. Run away. I think we need to run away from here now. Stop. Tea? Would you like some tea? You? <laughs> we? We? <laughs> <laughs> work um w right i'm i'm a little lost it's, it's my ex <laughs> yeah okay um um xylophone maybe the patients will like listening to us playing music or maybe looking at the x-ray <laughs> zip zap zoop <laughs> <laughs> right oh, i think God. we skipped a couple of yeah. letters but uh, <laughs> I, i don't know i don't i don't know what these doctors are going to uh, do at this hospital anyway <laughs> yeah so uh, generally when we go to school or when teachers come in mm. uh, they always ask us to introduce ourselves and people say things like what their hobbies are and uh, mm. different things like that uh, but if you were to tell me something I would like to know three things about you that's completely unique and mm. possibly what not a lot of people know about you. Okay, well, <laughs> three things that are unique about me. I'm a very patient person. You know, I have a lot of patience, and uh, I'm a teacher. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, the third thing is that my friends and colleagues uh, compliment me that I'm a good mentor. <laughs> That? So yeah that's what i feel that's interesting uh, yeah yeah, yeah awesome it. awesome and uh, i've known you for a short period of time now and in this little while we've also had very little interaction mm. but what of a little interaction we've had uh, maybe as a friend or maybe even working with each other in a very very small capacity i do know that uh, you have a very interesting way of looking at things Mm. and uh, what you're doing maybe other people are doing similar things as well mm. but the way you are doing it is completely different so i've always thought about this and i'd like for you to tell me about this too uh your journey or your story mm. from when you started exploring uh mm. daycare or working in a daycare working with children mm. to where you are now so what is the story yes bro actually to put it in a nutshell uh My life journey has many chapters, uh, many never-ending chapters, and uh, yes, it, each chapter has had its own twists and turns. Uh, and I'm glad that my family family has always stood by my side uh, through different phases of my life, and uh, I'm forever grateful uh, for it to them. Ah, uh, talking about my uh, career journey. Uh, it all started when i was uh, 18 19 i guess i still remember uh, it was an accident though and i never knew that uh, this accident back then would uh, uh, become my life purpose now uh, yes so i was talking about uh, you know when i started my career when i was 18 19 i still remember it was a summer afternoon and uh, uh we went into this uh, preschool a good uh, prestigious one 
and uh, I joined there as an associate teacher uh, because and also I was doing my evening college so my mom was like okay why don't you just uh, work there <laughs> in the morning and I start as I told you I started there as an associate teacher and uh, my mentor was uh, Miss Maria and Jos. I have learned quite a lot you know from her and there I spent close to uh, eight and a half to nine years. I started my career uh, too early <laughs> and uh, then I wanted, I did explore myself a lot and then I wanted uh, to explore myself a little more and uh, that's when my uh, second workplace happened. And uh, this is where uh, my professional growth uh, took off. Uh, I could see myself uh, growing in my profession. Uh, it was more like a grooming period and uh, I had learned quite a lot, you know, from this place. Uh, again, there I worked for uh, close to six and a half years. And uh, 2019 is when I felt uh, I should have a place uh, which I can call my own. <laughs> and that's when my uh, childcare then happened. So 2019, May is when, uh, you know, it got established. And 2020, Corona hit, pandemic hit. And uh, yes, uh, you know, my graph has always been uh, up and down. But I always uh, move forward with this uh, one motivation uh, that is just a bend and not the end. And that's what has uh, brought me uh, till today. And um, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm happy with the graph. And, uh, you know, I know that it's going to take me to places. And I love children. That's my passion. And, uh, and I know that I'm on the right track. So that's my journey in the nut in a nutshell. <laughs> awesome, awesome, very interesting. But um, I've always thought that what you do was for a longer period of time. I didn't know that uh, the inn was just for a few years now. Yes, it was. Uh, it started only in the in the year twenty nineteen. Very interesting. And uh, except for those three months or six months of complete lockdown. There was not a single day where I had to keep it shut because I still had, uh, you know, a few babies coming over for, you know, a one-to-one -one, uh, classes or, you know, uh, online sessions. So, you know, by God's grace, uh, it was just a comma and it was not a full stop. Right. So, yeah, that's about it. Right, right. And uh, we recently worked on mm. uh, something together. Yes. Where uh, your daycare, the inn, mm -hmm. the inn um, had uh, a summer camp. Yes. And I'm not going to talk a lot about that, but I just want to say that um, I've, I've seen pictures. Mm -hmm. And when I went there, it's just a lovely place to be at. Thank you. And uh, I, I know kids have a ball day. They have a fun day. Parents enjoy sending their kids mm -hmm. there. And I know you're going to talk a little bit more about that later. So I'm going to yes. leave it at that. But I also know that you have a small little niece that also goes to this daycare. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and I know that she's a little bombshell and yeah, a firecracker too. Uh, but uh, what's it like being a teacher or if you want to call yourself a teacher or facilitator ha, ha, ha. or someone in the classroom. Yeah, teacher. Is a teacher. Uh, what's it like being a teacher on one hand and also an aunt at home on the other hand? And what's the contrast? How does, how does that balance work there? Yeah. <laughs> it has just one tagline. Um, a teacher can become an aunt, but an aunt, uh, an aunt cannot become a teacher. Because, yeah, I do face my own challenges. Uh, she tends to get a little, you know, possessive. But somehow with uh, Ed, my niece is Ed. Uh, so she understands situations and um, not when it comes to teaching and learning because that uh, anyway happens. But when it comes to like, okay, I own, she's my aunt. So especially when I take my inquiries, you know, she would be there. And it's a bit challenging, but, um, you know, uh, I haven't faced that only with Ed. Uh, even the other babies, they get really positive. You know, they do things that uh, they've never done before. Uh, so that's not just with Ed. But uh, yes, uh, you know, I enjoy working with her. 
I, I haven't, uh, you know, faced challenges or difficulties as such uh, because she's someone who understands situations. And uh, yes, we've had a learning process because uh, she's someone, what I have observed is that she's someone who lives in the moment. If you ask me, I live, either live in the past or I live in the future. But she's someone who lives in the moment and she keeps uh, proving that every time. A small incident, uh, the other day I was taking her on a bike ride and uh, she was right, you know, she was uh, standing right in front of me and uh, uh, yeah, I, I wanted to uh, save her from those speed breakers. And I told her, Ed, uh, be careful and look up. And she gave me an instant answer. She's like, uh, I can't look up, it's sunny. <laughs> if I had to be in her place, I would have looked up and burnt my eyes. So she's someone, so she surprises me, you know, like this uh, and proves that she's li she lives in the moment. And uh, that's something, uh, you know, I've learned from her. And it's not a challenge at all, you know, so to work uh, with my niece, or to uh, have her in my own uh, daycare. So it's never been a challenge. <laughs> interesting, interesting. I've spoken to uh, parents that have mm. uh, the kids in their school, they teach in or the institute. And uh, they've always said that there is a line that you have to draw. And, mm. and of course, their children are much older and with uh -huh, older kids come different uh -huh. challenges as well, right? But it's nice to know that you're able to do this and still be the fun aunt at home and the fun teacher in school yes. as well, <laughs> right? And uh, this is a very interesting conversation. I want to talk about things a little more, but I think we're going to take a small diversion over here mm. because uh, now what we have on the, our podcast is a segment called the rapid fire question mm -hmm. round and uh, like the title suggests it is rapid fire but mm. you can take your time there's no okay. compulsion to be really fast so you mm. can take it easy you can take it slow and sometimes if you feel the need to explain something feel free to do uh -huh. so and if you are uncomfortable at any point with any question you can just say skip and we'll go to the next sure. one right yeah so uh, the first question <laughs> is if you had to be a Disney or a cartoon character which would you be and why uh for now peppa okay, <laughs> because why? children love peppa okay <laughs> and i always like to be loved by them <laughs> right right um what animal would you be in another life animal ha huh? we're gonna stop for a minute <laughs> a few moments later so the second question what animal would you be in another life? A kitten because very cute. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, if you could have an unlimited supply of one thing, what would it be? Love. <laughs> I'm not going to ask why. That doesn't need, that's an answer. I crave answer. for it. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. That's, that's the most unique answer I've had so far. Okay. Thank you. Uh, no, not just in this thing, in, uh -huh. in all the interviews I've done. Very nice. I love that answer. Okay. Uh, if your life was a story, what would it be titled? Uh, okay, so no title. Okay. okay. <laughs> Read my story and give your title. <laughs> the title is no title. Yeah, okay. Uh, what one thing is the most cutest for you? For now is my knees. <laughs> I thought as much. I thought you'd say that. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is your favorite holiday? I am a person who do not go on holidays. I do not like holidays. Uh, holidays would be my uh, house. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, what is the most interesting thing that you have in your wallet or purse? My dad's pick. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, what is your favorite pizza topping? Pizza topping? I'm not a pizza lover. <laughs> okay. Things that, things that you would put as topping. What would you, what do you like? <laughs> okay. Black pepper. Okay. Uh, what is your most favorite beverage? Tea. Your least favorite? Uh, I don't think. Coffee for now because I'm not allowed to drink coffee. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, which is your most favorite season? 
season winter because it's christmas time <laughs> okay and your favorite color black <laughs> um your favorite dessert dessert uh, okay i love almost all desserts is no favorite as such i love okay almost no all partiality <laughs> all right okay uh, what is your favorite animal kitten uh huh uh what is the last thing you watched on tv last thing i watched on tv was uh, rrr song <laughs> okay okay all right uh oh uh, where do you go when you want to be alone uh i am not a person who would want to be alone uh I either have my mom or my granny or my sister along with me always there at home. I don't go in search of uh, what to say a lonely place. I like people around but uh, I hate crowds. <laughs> right, right. All right. Um what's the best thing you've ever eaten from a restaurant? Best thing uh topics especially uh, related to the food uh, i might give a few boring answers because i'm not a foodie at all <laughs> i have not explored food as much but yes kebab is my favorite <laughs> okay all right uh what habit holds you back the most holds me back the most uh i have to think it can't be a rapid fire <laughs> answer um i think i'll answer to this question a little later all right all right um name a person who inspires you i don't i don't think so i can name a person who inspires me because uh, i take inspiration from anyone and everyone if i feel this person has inspired me i take it uh you know it can be a daycare baby who i you know a baby who, who's just 17 months old who comes or from a 80 82 year old uh i take inspiration from anyone and everyone so i do not want to like name but if you uh, specifically ask me for one name it's my mom <laughs> okay she's uh, been my all time favorite uh i have uh, looked up to her and she's a teacher as well and uh, she's an iron lady and uh, yes so if you ask me for one person who uh, inspires me 24 by 7 it's is my mom <laughs> wonderful all right and with that we have come to the end of the rapid fire question round hope uh, i put the stage on fire <laughs> the rapid have. fire you definitely have you definitely have yes and thank you for that thank you for being honest and open and being a sport mm. and playing this game with me answering these questions and on the podcast um i've had college professors i've teachers i've had people who teach music special educators different people in different walks of life life in education and uh, this is the first time i've had a dk professional mm. uh what are some of your experiences as a person who is involved in dk or with very 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 young children what's that like yeah firstly uh this is my first daycare experience or as a daycare facilitator because even in my you know uh, uh, even in the preschool where i worked i was a teacher you know early years educator but uh, when i started my own is when i actually became a dk teacher and uh, i always used to feel like uh, it's okay it's i don't think so it's uh, that difficult a job to handle uh, babies at the dk but uh, the challenge is that uh children in the daycare are across different ages and to match to their energy is like i have to uh you know match to the energy of a one year old and also match to the energy of an eight year old so that's a challenge but uh, yes uh 
you know it's all fall it's all uh, fallen on track so uh, it's taken care of and uh, you know i am still learning you know it's still a learning process um and every day i learn uh, through my experiences with them uh, yeah that's it what uh, you know my experience in the day care if you ask me about uh, is that the question <laughs> no no say say what happens. yeah so if you ask me about you know being a teacher and a daycare teacher you know what difference does it make uh, especially when it comes to uh, facilitating i don't think so there's any difference as such uh, except for matching to their energies so it's pretty much uh, you know uh, the same affair all right uh, that segues very nicely into the next question which is on which is on the same lines mm-hmm. and that is working in a school as a daycare teacher versus running your own mm-hmm. daycare mm-hmm. how how those how there's those two things yeah stay the, on the same level yes difference is that uh, you know that's not my own and this is my own <laughs> yes and uh, you know it makes a lot of difference when you're working for someone and uh, when you own your own place uh you know it's like uh, it's like my own baby you know i still consider you know my daycare as my own baby uh and uh, i haven't faced too many challenges it's just that uh you know here i don't have anyone to whom i should report to <laughs> i can take my own decisions so uh apart from that i don't think i don't think i've seen any a major difference as such uh and of course uh, responsibilities yeah it's uh, way more i have to be more responsible because uh, you know there i could still report to someone but here it's like yeah i have to face the situation uh, so yes but otherwise i don't think uh, there's any uh, major difference as such you know what so Right. Mm. Uh what is the youngest that you've had? 17 month old. 17 yeah. month old. Yeah. And I'm expecting a 10 month old baby also. Wow. <laughs> what what's that like? What's like work, working with very very young kids like uh how do you build trust with parents? How do you work with such young children? Yeah, by God's grace, uh, my rapport with almost all the parents uh, has been really really good. Uh you know it's uh, i they are more like my friends than uh, the actual actual parents uh, it's what they observe you know and most of the inquiries and conversions that have happened it's is through word of mouth it's not what they watch or what they google or explore and you know get details on the from the digital media it's more through word of mouth so there uh, you know i don't have to convince them much because they would have already got enough information about you know how uh, i deal with children and uh, so i don't have to work much on the trust factor and uh, yeah they a parent can actually observe and see how i take care of the babies and i think that's what builds the trust mm-hmm. yeah so right and uh, talk to me a little bit about the technical part of it right because you're not just taking care of them you also know that you work with them in terms of uh, making their motor skills better a little bit of writing a little bit of speech uh, and i know you do a transition program as well yes so uh, t- talk to me a little about that yes so the focus right now is um, more on their uh, social and personal skills or the other uh, you know like what do you say the pre writing or the pre math stuff so uh, parents that is because you know of the pandemic parents who who have approached me also they have approached me for uh, personal and social development in their kids and uh, yes of course uh, you know i conduct a lot of group activities uh, where i don't actually tell them you have to take turns and you have to share because they do not know what's uh, sharing and they do not know what's uh, taking turns only when they are a part of a group they they actually would understand what uh, these concepts are actually 
and I, I do a lot of group activities with them like that and with the toddler group uh, you know I I'm not a person who will google stuff you know I brainstorm I'm nocturnal you know I, uh, my brain works more at night so I keep coming up with a lot of uh, you know hands-on activities I'm someone who really believes uh, in experiential learning what we call it and uh, I make sure that uh, you know um, ch the, uh, the child loves doing what he or she does and I plan things according to you know their interest and uh, no force <laughs> And okay, if you just want to uh, explore it for like two minutes, yeah, that's it. And uh, yeah, that's how it's worked. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, coming from someone who has no idea about this, right? Mm. What does a child need from a daycare before entering school? Before entering a school? Yes. From a daycare? Uh-huh. Uh, I feel the uh, child would have already got equipped enough to uh, get into a mainstream school or a preschool uh, because uh, the transition is taken care of uh, in the daycare. When you say transition, what do you mean? Uh, the settling process okay. <laughs> because, uh, uh, you know, it's so very important, uh, not just... Uh, uh, children, parents also go through that separation anxiety and I always, uh, you know, uh, not advise parents but I, uh, you know, suggest parents you give enough time for a child to settle. Even if a child takes uh, a month to settle, give him that time to settle uh, because one, a child feels safe, okay, I'm safe at this place, I'm, you know, in safe hands, child will be happy. And uh, it's like how we are, no? We even we as adults, when we go to a place, it takes so much of time for us to adjust to new routines and new people. And imagine uh, a toddler; it's difficult for a toddler to adjust. So the the first and foremost thing, uh, and the very basic thing, what uh, how a daycare helps is with the transition, uh, in the settling process, and uh, I think that. Uh, will you know suffice right right a uh, very interesting stuff but uh when i first came to know about the inn even looking at the logo and everything i was very intrigued as to why did you choose to call it the inn <laughs> what does the logo mean <laughs> yes <laughs> So actually, uh, you know, the the name in is of course Avakrishian and uh, it comes from uh, the nativity story. So how we know uh, Mary and Joseph went in search of uh, a place and uh, they, they knocked at every inn. <laughs> so I felt it's nice, you know, and I wanted uh, my place to be, uh, you know, a simple one. So that is why I actually chose that uh, name. Yes, that's the story about it. Nice. And very beautifully, you know, a friend of mine had also uh, created the logo. And uh, yes, so that's how, you know, the in happened. <laughs> right, right. Very nice. I guess our viewers will be able to see the logo at the beginning of the podcast if you're looking <laughs> at it. I mean, watching it on YouTube. And uh, if you are a little more interested in knowing what this nativity story is or what this in is, we did talk a little bit about it on another podcast that we had a while ago. We had someone else oh, talk right. about it during uh -huh. Christmas time. So I'll probably link it somewhere up here. I don't know which side it's going to be, but <laughs> I'll link that over. Then you can go have a look at it if you want to know a little bit more about yeah. that. But it, I think there's a nice uh, song actually. Uh, it's the Christmas song. Mm -hmm. Okay, it goes like this. The greatest story ever told was told on Christmas Day Of two who came to Bethlehem They came a long, long way Very tired and dusty walk They knocked at every inn 
There was a baby to be born, a new life to begin, and it's a great day in Bethlehem. Great day in Bethlehem. Great day in Bethlehem. In a stable at the back of the inn, and it's a great day in Bethlehem. Great day in Bethlehem. Great day in Bethlehem. In a stable. at the back of the inn <laughs> so that's how very nice very nice, very nice very nice very <laughs> nice thank you for that i'm getting a lot more from the podcast than i bargained for which is awesome <laughs> thank you for that and uh, you did mention that uh, you wanted to do something simple and mm. uh, even though i can say yes it is simple but uh, there's a lot more to it than that mm. because in the simplicity of it all i could over there feel and see the love that you have for your work mm. and for the ki- ch- children over there and it reflects mm. and i see the results as well i was able just for one day and i was able to see all of this in just that few minutes and the few hours that i was there uh but uh, we did we did talk about this a little before the podcast and you have a very interesting philosophy about this so i thought i'll just put it out there and mm-hmm. listen to what you have to say and have the viewers and listeners have a listen to that too uh in terms of resources and uh generally what we like to do is we like to ask parents to uh, look up something give them something to read some a couple of books anything that will help them uh in the developmental or the early years of the child even even as adults or kids in high school or whatever right so uh what's your take on this matter yes <laughs> so with due respect to uh, all the researchers out there who spend their time and effort and money as well and put up things uh to uh, cater to uh you know to the crowd or to the ones who really need some information and someone who personally believes in uh, experiential stuff as i already told you and uh, it's just not the quote but uh, i also believe that uh, life teaches us lessons and uh, we don't have to actually explore stuff on digital media for it uh because it's like you know you go buy one and you get uh, two for free so you go and search for one and you might get two more unwanted stuff or unwanted information which will you know uh, make you very anxious and uh, uh it might not help you you know so it uh i would rather say that if you have issues or if you want information about uh, things it's good to approach the right person and uh, you know and mostly we look up uh, to these sites to get information or to get edified about uh, things that we are going through okay i have a swelling in my uh, ankle so what do i do about it so when you go put swelling in my ankle on my ankle and that will lead to something else <laughs> and that causes unwanted uh, uh, stress and uh, i don't think so that would help anyone so i personally do not uh, suggest or uh, you know ask parents or even my friends to uh, go get things from uh, you know the digital platform because it has a plethora of information and you cannot get the right thing what you actually need uh, uh, so the best thing is that um, uh, you observe your child and uh, you know you will be able to as a mother or as a father you will be able to uh, you know what to say uh, understand uh, what your child actually needs so you don't have to actually uh, you know uh, go to these uh, uh, resources uh, on digital platform because uh, uh, you might get 20% of the right information and 80% of uh, information that will uh, put you into a lot of stress <laughs> so i am personally not for it <laughs> right right that's a very interesting philosophy you have there and uh i know that you have a lot more going on up here because uh you also uh, especially i i don't have it right now but what you gave me for uh, when i visited you right very unique very creative i haven't really gotten something like that is there 
never look at it. Yeah. So you actually <laughs> gave me an idea, right? So what you did is, uh, you gave me uh, a little something with my picture over there and a thank you note and a couple of other pictures, uh, which is um, what you gave me is a memory uh-huh. because some places, some places they they give. Uh, uh they give you uh, a certificate they give you a memento the mm. nice the other place where i got something really nice with a plant huh. which is also very interesting and unique but i really like that i was able to take a memory back where i can hold it in my hand and look at it and remember what a fun time was that was so i know that you have a ton of ideas and your creativity is overflowing and everything mm. uh but if parents have to get in touch with you and find out more about your day care the in how would they do that uh, i am available on instagram on facebook and uh, my number is uh, 9902425362 you can always uh, get in touch with me and uh, you don't need any appointment to get in touch with me you have just a call away you can call me so yes Awesome, and for those of you who still find it a little difficult to do that, I will put those details. I will link your Instagram and Facebook. I'll put it down in sure. the description, <laughs> so you can click a link and go straight there and see a little bit of what the in and uh, Felsi is up to here. And now this is my most favorite part of every podcast. Uh, either based on the conversation we just had or on your general philosophy, what is one thing in the form of advice? Mm. or just something that you would tell parents to parents uh, first and foremost and the most important and basic is uh, believe in your children and just give them two things uh, one is the roots and the other one is the wings and everything else will fall in place <laughs> and everything else will be taken care of and uh, yeah that's it i think uh, that says it all <laughs> all right and if you if you were to tell something to kids i know that the kids that come to you are very small yes. but even if you were to tell them something and or even slightly older kids what advice would you give them yeah um keep exploring uh stay curious ask many questions uh, always wear a smile and uh, have truck loads of fun that's it <laughs> awesome. we should end of the day have happy kids <laughs> yes yes awesome and you know what i'm going to take that advice as well <laughs> and i'm going to apply that advice to everything that i do from now on and i also was able to learn so much from this conversation because nice. uh, we haven't really had a conversation like this before we've spoken about things in general had yes. some fun and some good laughs but uh, to talk about the industry that we're both a part of it's mm. uh, very interesting to get different perspectives so uh, on that note i want to thank you once again for being on the show and uh, i hope that we'll be able to do a lot more work together in the future as well so thanks a ton yeah Elsie. thank you so much bro thank you for uh, having me on board <laughs> yes uh, i'm happy that uh, i got this opportunity to uh, share the platform with you and uh, you know to share my experience um, yeah it was a nice conversation <laughs> and yes of course uh, the inn is uh, you know a happy place and uh, my happy space <laughs> awesome thank yeah, you once again thank you <laughs> thanks for listening if you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast please share it with others post about it on social media or leave a rating and review To catch all the latest from Troposphere and Tropocast, you can follow us on Instagram. The handle is at the rate of Troposphere, and make sure to watch our podcast videos on YouTube. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.